so good evening friends good evening sir hope you are all well yes sir yeah so shall we go into the mock questions whatever we have discussed we will uh, uh, topics we will have a discussion on it okay yes sir yes sir okay so consider the following statement calcutta unitarian committee tabernacle of new dispensation Indian Reforms Association. Keshab Chandrasen is associated with the establishment of which of the above? 1 and 3. 2 and it's 3. Not visible. 3 sir. only. 1, 2 and 3. Sir. Sir, one. you are not placing the question. Question is not. Now yeah, yeah. Now it's, now it's yeah. Yes, sir, now, now it is. Okay, so consider the following statements. Calcutta Unitarian Committee, Tabernacle of New Dispensation, Indian Reforms Association, Keshav Chandrasen is associated with the establishment of the above. Which of the uh, codes are correct? 1 and 3, 2 and 3, 3 only, 1, 2 and 3. One and three, sir. One and three. You see, yes, Calcutta sir. Unitarian. Unitarian is an agenda propounded by whom? Hmm? Yeah. Raja Ramon Roy. Raja Roy. So, so Raja Ramon Roy started Brahmo Samaj in 1828. He started Atmiya Sabha in 1814. In 1833, Raja Ramon Roy died. Yes or no? And Keshav Chandrasen, he uh, split the Brahmo Samaj in the year 1866, which became Brahmo Samaj of India. And he joined when? So how many, how many of you say that uh, he was associated with Calcutta? So tabernacle for new dispensation, who is associated? Indian Reforms Association. He wanted to print cheap materials. So some, some say, yeah, one and three. Anybody else? Can you open your mic and say? C, sir. C, only three. Three only. Three only. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, what about Indian uh, Tabernacle of Dispensation, New Dispensation? So, answer is B. B is what? Two and three. three. So, Keshav Chandrasen became the member of Brahmo Samaj in 56 and later he became in one year, in 1857, it's Acharya. Then, slowly he started to get the reins. His issue with Debendranath Tagore and he was uh, what he called uh, in constant uh, what he called tug of war ideologically and uh, Keshav Chandrasen was accusing Dibendranath Tagore of implementing Brahminical agenda. So, in order to solve Pratinidhi uh, Sam Samiti or the representative committee was formed to solve the difference in 1855, but they could not, uh, sorry, 1865, but they could not solve the difference. So, 1866, they have to split it into Adi Brahmo Samaj and Brahmo Samaj of India. So in 1881, Keshav Chandrasen established new dispensation, Nabha Bidhan, which means universal religion. So this Nabha Bidhan was part of Indian, uh, uh, he, uh, Keshav Chandrasen was part of the, the Indian Reform Association. According to this Indian Reform Association, uh, was formed to, to legalize the Brahmo uh, marriages and also to fix the age of marriage. 
So Calcutta Unitarian Committee was formed by whom? By Raja Ramon Roy, by Dwaraknath Tagore and William Adam. So hence Calcutta Unitarian Committee doesn't appear in the first uh, option. So answer, it is B. So Keshav Chandrasen established what all things? He established, he was part of Tabernacle of New Dispensation called Navabidhan and also Indian Reforms Association. Saurav, are yes, you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, now it is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Satya Sodak Samaj, it was organized what? A movement for upliftment of tribals in Bihar a temple entry movement in Gujarat, an anti-caste movement in Maharashtra, a peasant movement in Punjab. C, option C. C, sir. C, Satya Sodak Samaj was established by Truth Seeker Society, was established by whom? By Mahatma Jodhi Bhai Pule. So, Mahatma Jodhi Bhai Pule established in 1873 on 24th September and in Maharashtra, in Pune. And what was the mission? He had the mission of educating and also increasing the social rights and political access of the underprivileged group, particularly Dalit Emancement and anti-Brahmanical movement, which was focused on women, the untouchables, the lower caste in the Maharashtra. What was or were the objects of Queen uh, Victoria's proclamation in 1858 to disclaim any intention to annex Indian states, to place the Indian administration under the British crown, to regulate East India Company's trade with India. So, which of the uh, select the correct answer using the code? So, which is the code correct? One and two, sir. One, One and, two. and two. Sure, but I have doubt. See you. So, you see, when, when Queen's Proclamation came in 1858, after the revolt of 1857, when the revolt was subsided, uh, when the Hindustan Emperor Bhagadur Shah II Zafar was deported to Burma and Rangur, he died in exile. So, uh, uh, so, what was the policy taken? What was the political policy followed after 1857 to 19? Uh, we have done no 1857 to 1947. What is the political policy? Policy of subordinate states. Subordinate. What they did? They came. Both the interests coincided. So after 1857, what was that? Both states came in unison. It's called subordinate union. Prior to 1857, from 1813 to 1857, what was the policy? Policy of political policy Sub of subordinate subordination. Subordinate isolation. Okay. So one minute, one minute. So you can see what was the policy taken after 1857. British disowned the policy of annexation. So they disclaim any intention to annex. That is why they go for what? Political policies. Who are subordinate? Who is a superior? Indian states. Indian princely states are subordinate. And who is superior here? British. British so both have what? 
they have the interest to safeguard their own possession and their own domain. That is why they all join together or union. But Indian states are still subordinate. So you can see intention to safeguard the uh, states. So disclaim to intention to annex, yes. To place Indian administration under British crown, yes. To regulate the affairs of companies trade with India, no. Companies trade in the governance of India is ended. So, what's the answer? One and two, sir. Yes, sir. So, A, one and two is correct. So, the Queen's proclamation of 1858, uh, it disclaimed of any intention to annex Indian states as announcement reversed Lord Dalhousie's pre-war policy of political unification through princely state annexation. They abandoned the policy of annexation and also they placed the Indian administration under British. Now, Charter Acts of 1813-33-1853 framed to regulate the East British East India Company's trade with India, not 1858. So, Charter Act 1813-1833-1853 these three acts were mainly formed to regulate the affairs. 1858, it ended the association of British East India Company in India. So the demand for the Thibaga peasant movement in Bengal was for what? Production of the share of land lords from one half of the crowd to one third the grant of ownership of land to peasants as they were actual cultivators of the land or uprooting of the jamindari system and end the serfdom or right writing of all the peasants debts to wave off all debts so what was it thib bhaga thib means what three bhag three. is what so one third so earlier the share of the uh, the sharecropper to the peasant to the landlord was 50% and which was very high so they were asking. So uh, one half means one half into percentage means what? 50%. 50%. So one third uh, into percentage is what? 33.33%. So they wanted to reduce from 50% to 3%. So answer is A or B? Yes, sir. A. Everybody agree, A? Yes, sir. A is correct. So, A is correct. So, Thibaba movement is probably one among the very important peasant movements in the history of India, particularly in the Bengal province. And it was initiated by the Kisan Sabha. So, this Kisan Sabha represents a peasants which is a front of the Communist Party of India in prior to independence in 1946-47. This Thibaga movement was a movement of the sharecroppers of in Bengal, they demanded two thirds instead as half instead of one by two. They were by asking for what two by three. What do you mean by uh, uh, two thirds? Two thirds yes, means T Baga means. Uh -huh. So they were demanding two thirds of share instead of half price. So instead of fifty percent, they want what? They wanted more. Two third of uh, percentage. Well, if you calculate how much it comes, how much it comes? So around sixty six percentage they wanted. So not thirty three percent. They wanted sixty six percent. So they wanted an increase in the uh, sixty six percentage. So. Basically, their principle is that they wanted two-thirds of the share and landlord should get one-third. So, at the time of the share cropping, peasants, they had to give half of the harvest to the owners of the land. So, in this way, uh, what happened? The harvesters were losing 50%. So, then the they wanted to reduce the share of the, uh, uh, what he called, the peasant share to the owner will be 33 percent and the share of the share proper will be 66 percent so now the owner will get only 
33% instead of 15. So we can see that the demand for the Thibaga or sharing by the thirds was to reduce the share given to the landlords to one third. One third means 33%. So this happened during which year? 1946 to 47. And this Thibaga movement was taken by by which which prosa, which uh, uh, organization? Kishan Sabha. Kishan Sabha is a peasant front of farmers, uh, what they call being of the CPI, Communist Party of India. The tendency for increased litigation was visible after the introduction of land settlement of Lord Cornwallis in 1793. The reason for this normally traced to which of the following provisions. Making Zamindar position stronger versus farmer, making East India Company an overlord of Zamindars, making judicial system more efficient, none of the above. Number B, sir. B. Yes, sir. Making East India Company an overlord of Zamindars. Yes. So Omni say that uh, Lord Cornwallis introduction of land settlement uh, is a making of the uh, East India Company as an overlord. Yeah, you can open your mic and say. <clears throat> Daniel. Yes, sir. What is the answer? It's number B, sir. Making the East India Company an overload of Zamindar. Okay, Arun. C, sir. You are seeing C. You want to make the judicial system more efficient. So, answer is what? B is correct. So, B, that is, the tendency for increased duplication was visible after introduction of land settlement under Lord Cottable is the reason for this is that they wanted to make East India Company and overlord of Jamindars. So permanent settlement was an agreement between whom? It was an agreement between the British East India Company and the Bengali landlords. How did the Bengali landlords come? Now, when they brought the Permanent Settlement Act, they brought a new class of people. And this class of people were not land owning. The land from the riots were all uh, what you call the confiscated or usurped and it was given to this class and this class was responsible for the collection of revenue and they have to give it to the government so you can see that the east India company had to fix revenues so they raised it from the land so this was concluded by the administration of lord cornwallis in 1793 and this agreement was between whom by the company and the the new type of uh, uh, owners of the land called Jamindars and they had to fix the land revenue. So through this new revenue settlement system, it was inspired on the background from where the England, where the land revenue was made with the big farmers, where the landlords were the permanent masters of their holdings and they collected revenue from the peasants and also looked after the interests. The scenario of England and the scenario of India are same. I'm asking you. England, they had the same thing, permanent masters. They were looking after the interest. Did the same kind of exploitation happen in England by the landowners? What happened to the Indians? Uh, it's not same, sir. So that means the peasants or sharecroppers or the farmers were looked after well by their permanent masters in England. But in India, what happened? The land owners, particularly Jamindars, were not looking after the peasants properly. So you can see that the, the system, though it was successful in England, this permanent system or Jamindari system, did it pass or fail in India? It failed, sir. It failed. So Lord Cornwallis, wanted to create a hereditary class of this landlords in India and call it Zamindari system so that British will get steady flow of money or income without any headache. 
So they brought the system. So this system was a very big burden to the Indian agriculture and also it impoverished the landlords or it impoverished the peasants. The peasants, sir. Peasants, peasants. were, peasants were impoverished. Peasants were, uh, what you call, destabilized. Peasants were on the receiving end, and finally, it uh, uh, it uh, what you call destroyed the the India's agrarian tradition. Which among the following provided a common factor for tribal insurrection in India in the nineteenth century? Introduction of a new system of land revenue and taxation of tribal products. Influence of foreign religious missionaries in tribal areas. Rise of large number of money lenders and traders and revenue farmers as middlemen in tribal areas. Complete disruption of the old agrarian order of the tribal communities. C, sir. C. C. Yes, sir. C. So, Omni says C. Raise your hands. <laughs> Sorry, sir. You can you can raise your hands in the uh, this one in Zoom. Okay, here my sent. Good. So we'll see. Answer is. What's the answer? D. D. C. D is the answer. That means what? The complete disruption of old agrarian order of tribal communities. So, what was the main cause for the tribal insurrection? It is not a new system or religious. The first and foremost thing is the old agrarian of order of tribal community. Well, how tribals will uh, uh, do their agriculture? First tribal thing, there is no thing called taxation. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So what they will do, they will all collect uh, the tribal. So whether it is in plains, they will have different types of lands. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So there, they, they will try to what? They will collect and the harvest will be will be brought together and it will be given to the tribal chief in the public. So the tribal chief, what he will do? Tribal chief, what he will do? He will... Uh, What he will do, tribal chief? So he will auction or he will give equitable distribution according to the families. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, so they will, whatever, uh, what you call the fruits they do, they will exchange or they will give it to the tribal chief and he will decide to whom to give, what to give. So it is a collective responsibility. Okay, and tribal chief is the supreme. So when... When British came, what they brought? New land revenue settlement they brought. They, they started to bring in this taxation. And also they were, uh, what you call, bringing new type of people called the revenue farmers, middlemen, traders, contractors, money lenders. So all this came and they, what was that? They disrupted the old agrarian order. So the answer probable is D. Okay. Though all the answers are correct. But you have to go to the final one is D, complete disruption of the old agrarian order of the, when they disrupt only, they bring all this new system. If they have not disrupted, then there is, there is no change in the system. Then there would have been no tribal insurrection. Okay, so answer is D. Which of the following statement is correct regarding Brahmo Samaj? Brahmo Samaj opposed idolatry. He denied the need for a priestly class for inter, uh, interpreting the religious text. It popularized the doctrine that Vedas are infallible. What was the, the agenda had in the Brahmo Samaj? Which of these codes are correct? It opposed idolatry? Yes, sir. Okay. So that means it also proposed what? One God concept called monotheism. Mono then it denied the need for the priestly class for interpretation of religious texts. Yes. It, it, it denied the Brahminical tradition. 
it popularized the doctrine that vedas are infallible that means what infallible means what means beyond doubt beyond human comprehension or beyond any any false information it is not corrupted what was the answer d sir d all is correct yes sir all is correct uh, all it is what it means that sir infallible was given by arya samaj right sir tanan saraswati okay so you are saying that which of the following is the correct so only 1 and 2 is correct so answer is b Yes, sir. Like, say a B. Or, sir. like I am confused between A and B. A and B. Yes, sir. Either one, only one or two also. Yes, sir. Like the history class, uh, they particularly did not uh, deny the need, but uh, they were against certain uh, philosophies of the history class. Okay, we will see. Answer is B is correct. That one and two is correct. Third one. Vedas, as you said, is our own. It is uh, uh, Dayananda Saraswati who gave that that no other scripture is as true as Vedas. Vedas are the only source of truth. Okay, so Brahma so, Samajas denounced what polytheism. So they introduced what monotheism. Okay, then they also okay. opposed idol worship. Brahma Samajas denied the need for a priestly class for interpretation. This is also correct. the doctrine of infallibility of vedas was not popularized by brahma samaj but it was done by arya samaj arya samaj both brahma samaj originated as a reformist movement on the ancient foundation of vedic religion yet infallibility of vedas was questioned by many of the members so arya samaj was a revivalist okay so you can see the difference between revivalist as well as reformist reformist is what reform they wanted to take out the prejudices and all the errors that is there and bring it as a new form revival is that without changing they'll go back to the old and bring the old okay so yes. answer is b 1 and 2 it is correct with reference to the history of india consider the uh, following pairs aurang in charge of treasury of the state baniyan indian agent of east india company mirasdar designated revenue payer to the state which of the following pairs are correctly matched is aurang the in charge a person in charge of uh, treasury of the state during the british rule no sir less prior to our arrival is baniyan an indian agent of in east india company nirasadar is a designated pay, payer of tax three only sir three only answer is three answer is b that means both two and three is correct aurang is a persian word for warehouse a workshop where goods are collected before being sold so aurang is not in charge of treasury aurang means what it is a warehouse so this is wrong so baniyan is an agent of east india company yes mirasdar is a designated revenue payer to the state yes so answer 2 and 3 which is record b is the correct answer which of the following statements correctly explains the impact of industrial revolution on india during the first half of 19th century first half of 19th century means what that means from 1800 to 1850 is called first half of 19th century so which were the following statement correctly explain the impact of industrial revolution on india indian handicrafts were ruined machines were introduced in indian textile industry in large numbers railway lines were laid in many parts of the country heavy duties were imposed on the imports of the british manufacturers which is correct sir is it going to be a 
Yes, sir. You would go check one by one. Which are the following step rates? So from 1800. So go to the EEC revenue policy. From we have seen our revenue policy. We saw our revenue policy. Yes, from sir. 1600 to 1757. What was the agenda? Trading company. They were buying goods and from the bullion gold bars from England to India. After 1757 to 1813, what was the phase of economy? Phase of mercantilism. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Then from 1813 to 1857, what was that? Phase of free trade, lazy fare, where traders brought their goods freely and also without any imported export duties. And Indian surplus, they've tried to uh, buy our finished goods and they sent it. So India slowly started to lose the, the balance of trade was in favor of England. From 1857 to 1947, there it is phase of financial imperialism. So now you see they are saying impact of the first half of 19th century. First half of 19th century means what? That 1800 to 1850. 1800 to 1850. That means what? Mercantilism. Mercantilism what? They were purchasing goods and uh, everything from the Indian revenues, from the profits on. So th what was that? Here, handicrafts ruin. Yes, to a certain extent. Machines were introduced in India in large numbers. No, because India was a raw material producing country. Then railway lanes were laid. No, railway lanes were laid only after 1850. So, so C is eliminated. Heavy duties were imposed on the import of British manufacturers. No, sir. No, because no duties were paid. Yeah. So that means what is the answer? Number A. Everybody is sure A is the answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So A is the correct answer because... Now we're able to know how we are eliminating. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can see that by 1830s. So what we used we uh, to solve this answer, what did we use? What did Elimination. Use? Elimination. Elimination. Sir. Prior to that, we used the economic Timeline. policy. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So uh, did I teach you economic policy? British faces. Uh, yes, sir. So you can see if you know this, the, the era, from which era to which era, what policy, can you solve the answer or not? Yes, sir. So now we can see that how we eliminated one by one, we put that case into this era and check. So when, when you know the era, the, what was the issue, which period to which period, then it is easy, no, to eliminate answer. Yes, sir. Okay. So answer is A. So by 1830s, cheap machine-made goods from Britain flooded the Indian markets as these were cheaper than the Indian textile. The Indian textile industry suffered. It led to the decline in the Indian uh, textiles and many weavers from the Bengal were thrown out of their employment. Railways were introduced in India only after 1850, particularly in 1853. This was not in the first half, but in the second half. Heavy duties were imposed on Indian textiles in Britain, not vice versa. British textiles or anything import was not taxed at all. Okay. So the Vital Vidwang Sakh, the first monthly journal to have the untouchable people as its target audience was pa published by Gopal Baba uh, Walang, uh, Walankar Jodi Bapule Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and Bhim Rao Ramji Ambedkar What did Ambedkar bring? He brought Bhaiskrit Hitkarni Sabha Now Gandhi brought what? Harijan and he also wrote Now Jeeva and other things. But uh, Vital Vidwans. So Jodi Bhai Pule, Gopal Baba Angarkar. Jodi Bhai Pule wrote what? He wrote uh, uh, in his 
गुलाम गिरी एंड वन मोर बुक ही रोट धर्म रतीय तृतीय रत्न ओके सो मोस्ट प्रॉब्ली वॉट इज दंसर ए बी सी डी गोपाल बाबा वाला बाबा वालकर यस सो गोपाल बाबा वलंकर ही बिगैन पब्लिशिंग द मंथली जर्नल कॉल विटाल विद्वंसक दैट मींस डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ ब्राह्मणिकल और द सेरेमोनियल पोल्यूशन ओके सो व्हिच मींस व्हिच वाज द फर्स्ट टू हैव अनटचेबल एंटी ब्राह्मणिकल स्टैंड सो इन 1888 गोपाल बाबा uh valankar was anti brahmin in his approach so he was targeting the untouchable people through his paper called vital vidvansak means destroyer of the brahmanical pollution or the ceremonies which is associated with the brahmins he also wrote articles for uh, in the marathi language for new paper, newspaper such as ंग age of consent restitution of conju uh, conjugal rights which of the code is given below only 1 and 2 2 and 3 1 and 3 1 to 3 what do you mean by if i use take first statement rakma bai who is rakma bai what is the case in 1884 during this time who was there ruling england England. Victoria. So who? Queen Victoria. Victoria. What is her relationship with India? Queen Empress. She is Queen Empress of India. She is the Queen Empress of India. So as Queen Empress of India, so why did she enter, and what was her agenda? So whether it is women's right to gain education, age of consent, or restitution of conjugal rights anybody yes sir a 1 and 2 1 and 2 sir a 1 and 2 age of consent sir age of consent means what age of consent means at what age you can marry and have marriage life you can have your uh, sexual uh, what you call intercourse or uh, what you call the consummation consummate consummation of your marriage for that they should have minimum age for girls so restitution of of conjugal rights conjugal rights is also is also re relates to this marriage and consummation restitute means what reinstitute yes or no yes sir reinstitute is called restitute so reinstitute conjugal rights means what give the right to again what you call live with that particular person and they will have what you call they'll consummate their marriage so this case is revolving around all these three or just only one uh, one and two uh, uh, two and three one and three so one three so i'm say a answer is b B is the answer. That means two and three. So Rakumai Bai Raut went to become the India's first qualified doctor. So what was the the Rukumai uh, uh, Rukma Bai Raut's issue? So you can see that the major cause for her issue was the enactment of the Age of Consent Act in eighteen ninety one. So this. Uh, Rukma Bai Raut was married off at the age of eleven to Dada Ji Bika Ji, who was aged nineteen. 
she however continued to stay at the house of her widowed mother and this widowed mother she married uh, to an assistant surgeon who is a doctor dr sakaram arjun raut so when her widowed mother had married assistant surgeon sakaram raut due to the efforts of the government of uh, india's uh, uh, widow remarriage act of 1856 so sakaram arjun raut become the foster father of rakumar bai raut so now already rakumar bai raut was uh, married to dada ji bika ji so she was supported by her first step father dr um uh, sakaram arjun raut was an assistant surgeon so she refused to stay with bikaji and his family at his in-laws place so this led dada uh, dada ji bikaji to file a suit in the court so this famous case became dada ji bikaji versus rakumai bai case in 1885 while bikaji asked for restitution of conjugal rights what do you mean by restitution of conjugal rights give the right back to consummate the marriage and because already uh, um, rakuma boy is his wife and he wants to have a family with her and to to, uh, to live with her to consummate his marriage so during this we can see justice robert hill pinhe made a note that in this case raut was a young woman and was married off in a helpless infancy hence uh, cannot be forced she is not of that age of reasoning she was for married off so this case now went for retrial after many in the indian judiciary criticized justice roberts observation in this case so judgments came they, they that it is diminishing our hindu customs how can you this english people understand our our hindu dharma or our existing tradition so you can see that this debates went on around hindu versus english law later it also debates were around internal reforms external reforms so people were saying no respect our ancient custom and tradition no except that this girl was a very minor she was not of reasoning she was married off without her consent now she is not doesn't want to stay so now the court finally gave what it gave a judgment as this rukma bai on 4th march 1887 to go and live with her husband or face imprisonment for 6 months instead so so she bravely wrote against this judgment said that rather i will uh, live with my husband than i will go to the uh, prison so she chose prison instead of husband so when this became issue this case was was referred she rakumar bai raut wrote to the queen empress of india who was queen empress of india queen victoria the queen, queen victoria so now queen victoria she used her uh, what he called the divine power what is bestowed on the monarch and she what he called dismissed or she annulled her marriage she overruled all the courts annulment was done and later all the court order she her, her marriage was dissolved by one what he called veto power of queen victoria later this rakumai bai went to england and she pursued her further studies she went to london school of medicine and she earned a five year mbbs degree and she became the first uh, indian woman in the later half of 19th century to become medical doctor and this case is famously known for victoria queen victoria empress of india using the the what is called the uh, empress the, the veto power of the emperors okay do you understand yes sir okay so indigo cultivation in india declined by beginning of 20th century because of what present resistance to the oppressive conduct of planters its unprofitability in the world market because of new inventions national leaders opposition to the cultivation of indigo 
government control over planters. So you go by one by one. Did government control the planters? No. No, sir. National leaders opposition to indigo cultivation? No. No, sir. It's pro unprofitability in the world market because of new invention. Yes. Synthetic dyes? Yes. Peasant resistance to conduct of the planters? It is there, but it was not in 20th century, in 19th century. Yes or no? Yes. That is from 1800 to 1899. You can see many peasant revolts. There were peasant revolts, but the resistance is not planters. Now, the market is now volatile because of the new invention. So, answer is A or B? B answer is B. The colonial rulers exploited the knowledge of indigo plantation in India. And you can see from 1777 onwards, extensively indigo was cultivated. So indigo became what? Modernized under the British. And later, indigo was the product of economy. So Indian economy was turned into, into colonial economy. So you can see that it, the synthetic type of dye, which was later commercially successful in the West, now the 20th century, it was not able to uh, compete with the natural dye. Natural dye lost the, uh, what you call that, preeminence. Now synthetic dye was very cheaper and they would start to use in large scale. So natural dye got what? Neil got uh, uh, unpopular among the people in the West. So it lost its uh, relevance. So with reference to the history of India, Wool Gulan or the great tumul, uh, tumult was in, the, in, the, uh, in this is the description of which of the following event. The revolt of 1857, Mopla rebellion of 1921, Indigo revolt of 1859-60, Birsa Munda, Munda revolt of 1899 and 1900. Option D, sir. Bursa Munda revolt. Yeah, Bursa Munda revolt is also called Ul Gulan revolt. And Bursa Munda was born in 1875 in the Munda tribe. And this Munda tribes have a preeminence over others because they were called as what? Original clearer of forests. forests. So Munda tribe. No other Adivasi or tribals in India has that preeminence. Only so, Birsa Munda is also referred as Darti Abba. That means what? He is the father of the earth or earth father. So, he led the rebellion against the colonists and that is called Ulgulan or revolt. This Munda rebellion uh, was against the British government. They imposed what? The feudal state system of bringing the uh, landlords, money lenders, they destroyed the original system and also the missionaries also tried to uh, do mission work and the Munda people saw these missionaries and an extension of the British rule so they attacked the schools, colleges, hospitals, convents, churches as well as other government institutions everywhere and in 1899 Mursa Munda was caught and 1900 he died in prison. So he is the first tribal freedom fighter in India. Who among the following was associated as the secretary with Hindu female school, which later uh, came to be known as Bethun female school? Annie Besant, Dibendranath Tagore, Ishwar Chatra, Vidya Sagar, Sarojini Naidu. So, Bethune female school comes in 1848 or 1849. Yes or no? Yes. So, that means Sarojini Naidu comes in 1925 to 1950s. So, there is no question of Sarojini Naidu. So, Dibendranath Tagore comes in uh, 18, uh, what you called 66. Even Ishwar Chandra comes under 1856. He was also associated uh, with the Brahmo Samaj. Annie Besant comes in 19, uh, 19, uh, 1915. He becomes the member of Congress. Priorly, 
she enters India in 1893 and 1909 or 1907, she becomes the president of Theosophical Society because uh, uh, Alcott dies, Colonel Alcott. So which is the answer? Annie Besson, Divendana Tagore, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Sarojini Naidu. C. 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 Answer is C. So, correct. So, Bethune College owes its origin to John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune. J. E. D. Bethune. John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune. So, John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune was one among the foremost educationists, particularly in the in the women education. So he wanted, so what began as a female school in 1849, it was renamed as Bethune School in 1856. So the managing committee of the school was formed under Pandit Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar. How? Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar is one among the pioneer in women education and he was the secretary of this Bethune school. Prior to that, uh, Vidya Sagar established his own money, 35 schools, girls' schools all over Bengal. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, so Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar is a personality which is associated as the uh, as Vidya Sagar as the secretary. With reference to the Indian history. Which of the statements are correct? The Nizam of Arcot emerged out of Hyderabad state. Mysore kingdom out of emerged out of Vijayanagara kingdom. Rohila kingdom was found out of the territories occupied by Ahmad Shah Durani. Who invites Durani? Durani was invited by, invited by Najib Uddawla, the leader of whom? Rohilas. Rohilas. So that means Rohilas are the Iranis. Uh, Irani party was present prior to the arrival of Durani. So you can see that Rohila Khan was formed out of territories formed by Ahmad Shah Durani or it was there. What is the answer? Nizam of Arcot uh, uh, emerged out of Hyderabad state. Yes, it, it gained independence. Mysore came, emerged out of Vijayanagara Empire. Ah, yes, sir. So, Rohila Khan was formed out of occupied territories occupied or it was there prior to that? So, you are saying know. statement 1 is correct, 2 is correct. What is the statement 3? Sir, statement 3 is wrong. You are saying statement 3 is wrong. How many are saying yes, statement 3 is wrong? Statement 3 is right, I think, sir, because whatever was left over by Durani, Najibuddola claimed that. Rajesh, what, you, what is the answer? Daniel. Answer is 1 and 2, sir, because Rohila Khan was already. So no, the answer is A. Yeah. That is 1 and 2 is correct. That means Karnatic was dependent on Deccan Hyderabad. Later, it gained uh, what you called independence because its founder, first uh, uh, commander was Sadat. And Sadat, after that, you can see slowly they started to uh, become what? Autonomous. Uh, they, so, Wadiyar family, which ruled Mysore, it was a small state, feudatory kings. And it was what? Part of Vijayanagara Empire. And now, all the Vijayanagara Empire's tradition the Wadayar family takes over, this small vassal state becomes a big Mysore state later. So the kingdom of Rohila Khan rose under the decline of Mughal Empire in 1721. We can see that who was the fugitive king who ran away? Alam Shah. From which year to which year Shah Alam ran away? We can see that in 1772, who comes? 17. 1772, Mazdi Sindhya comes and takes and places. 
So yeah. prior to that, 1761, you have battle of third battle of Panipat, Durrani versus Marathas. So who was ruling? You can see what was the tri-party. Najib Uddawla plays the politics. He brings Suja Uddawla plus Durrani versus Marathas. So prior to 1761, Rohila Khand was there. So you can see that Muhammad, the, the, the Nawab Muhammad uh, Ali Muhammad Khan was the ancient Bara dynasty. He was the first Nawab of Rohila Khan. Later, you can see the uh, previously as overlords of the Afghani chiefs at this age of 14. Now, the when Mughal, uh, the Mughal Empire was crumbling, Rohila dynasty started. So Najib Udawla was one among the Top. So he only invites Durrani to come and decimate the, the Marathas. So the first quarter of the 17th century, in which of the following was the factory or factories of East India Company located? 17th century. That means what? 1600 to 1699. Yes or no? <coughs> in all places you had company of first quarter of 17th century. First quarter means what? 16, 1600 to 1615. Okay. So which all the factories were there located by the East India Company. East India Company, Sri Kakula, Trichinapoli, Broch. Trichinapoli, it was there? Trichy? No. No. Trichinapoli no, prominence comes in Carnatic Wars. No. Broch was there. Broch is near Gujarat. Surat, Broch. So uh, there is most probability that 1600 to 1625 in Surat, Gujarat area, Broch had its factory. And in the eastern coast, Sri Kakula or Chikakol was there. Sri Kakulam, present day Andhra Pradesh. You have this Masili Patinam. In Masuli Patinam, Sri Kakula is next port which comes. So answer is only one or it is two. What is the answer? A or B? If three is eliminated. B, sir. D. Some say yeah. that uh, all the um, uh, two and three is correct. B, one and two, sir. One and two. We'll see the answer. Answer is what? Only A. That means which is correct? Only one brooch is correct. That means Fika Kulam is not there. They had Masuli Patnam. So by 1623, English East India Company had what? Surat, Broj, Ahmedabad, Agra, Masuli Patnam. Okay. In 1625, East India Company's authority, Surat was made an offense to fortify the factory, but English chiefs were immediately imprisoned and later local authorities. Uh, had put uh, what he called uh, iron curtains uh, by on the uh, local authorities of Mughal Empire on the British. So Masuli Patnam, they opened the factory in 1611, but soon they shifted their center to the activity to Madras. Prior to that, Madras, they had the factory in East in a place called Armagon. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So it was not profitable from Armagon, they shifted it to Port St. George. And today's Madras. Yes or no? Sir, is Armagon in Bengal province, sir? No, no, no. Armagon, if you see in the map, So you can see here it is Chennai, the coast, and this place is called Lake Pulikat, and this place is called Armagon. And this place is called Masuli Patnam. So it is north of Chennai is called Armagon. Okay.
want to take a break yes sir yeah so take a break and come back yes sir sir yes ravi solunga ah uh, sir rukma bai case nama paathom la aamaga adula vande paatha age of consent ipo avanga vande paatha vande 11 years le vande kalyanam panniduvaanga la sir pin avanga adha thana pinadi ku vande idu panuvaanga claim panuvaanga na chinna vishle na enna theriyada vishle vande kalyanam panitan solte aama adu adu adula varada sir appo இல்ல இப்ப அவங்க கல்யாணம் பண்ணி ரொம்ப நாளைக்கு அப்புறமா தான் அந்த கேஸே வருது சோ அவங்க அப்ப அந்த இடத்துல பரவம் அடிச்சு அந்த இது அவங்க அந்த ஏஜ் வந்துருச்சு அவங்களுக்கு மேரேஜபிள் ஏஜ் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி கல்யாணம் செஞ்சிருந்தாலும் ஏஜ் ஆஃப் கன்சென்ட் ஆக்ட் வந்துட்டு ஏறக்குறைய பன்னெண்டு வயசு பதினாலு வயசு பதினாறு வயசு பதினெட்டு வயசு ஆக்கி இருக்காங்க இல்லையா ஆஹ் அப்போ அவங்க கல்யாணம் வந்து பதினோரு வயசு வந்துட்டு இல்ல அவங்களுக்கு சின்ன வயசுல நடந்துச்சு அது இது பண்ண முடியாது அப்ப இந்தியால இருக்கிற லாயர்ஸ் மற்ற இதுங்கெல்லாம் வந்து அப்பர் காஸ்ட் பீப்புள் எல்லாம் ப்ரொட்டஸ்ட் பண்றாங்க அது பண்ணதுமே என்ன பண்றாங்க ஜட்மெண்ட மாத்தி எழுதுறாங்க யாருக்கு எதிராக ருக்குமார் பாய்க்கு எதிராக எழுதுறாங்க அப்புறமா தான் வந்தது சோ அப்ப அந்த டைம்ல அவங்க அந்த பருவம் அந்த அந்த ஏஜ் அவங்க அட்டைன் பண்ணிட்டாங்க
Savra, you able to hear me? Ah, yes, sir. Okay. So we'll go into the morally mentor reforms of 1909. So earlier we see that the Surat split of 1907 was a big jolt to the Congress. What happened in Congress? The the formerly the moderates and extremist faction of Congress got splitted, and this weakened not only the Congress. Congress initiated a big mass movement called Swadeshi movement or the boycott movement. When this split happened, movement also got weakened. Who got the advantage? British got the advantage. So they were able to uh, lati charge and arrest and put martial law. In this way, they weakened the first mass movement of India, Swadeshi and boycott movement. <coughs> On background of this, Britishers give the constitutional reforms of 1909, which is properly called as Indian Council Act of 1909, called as Monto um, Morley Minto reforms. Morley was the Secretary of State, Cabinet Minister, MP of England, and Minto was the Governor General, Viceroy of India. So in this, you can see is the historical significance of 1909 Indian Council Act is that they brought for the first time communal politics into India. What was the communal politics? Muslims were given separate electorates and this was the biggest bone of contention. For the first time, we can see that British is playing in the, 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 the communal card that English wanted to divide and rule India. Why did they want to divide and rule what was the reason to divide India on just to break the unity? So that the of the Indians. So they want to destroy the unity among whom? Among the Hindus and Muslims. Among Hindus and Muslims. Okay. So only so in this communal electorate, British made sure that only Muslims will contest. And Muslim members can vote in that constituency. What about other people? None from others will be allowed. That means what? They will be denied the voting right. And this purpose was to still pour the fuel of what? Communal divide. They were not satisfied by merely, what you called, partitioning the 1905 Bengal. But still, they want to partition what? The people of India communally. So can you see how... Britishers go to a level to, to entertain communal politics. <clears throat> so Delhi Darbar takes place on this background in 1911. Who was the Governor General? Lord Harding was the Governor General Viceroy during this period. So he succeeded Minto. So Lord Harding was Governor General Viceroy of India from 1910 to 1916. So he organized the Delhi Darbar for to mark the coronation of King George V. Okay, now recently, three days ago, who was crowned uh, coronation king, king? King Charles the Third. King Charles the Third. Okay. So you can see that Delhi Darbar was previously held in India or this is the first Darbar? This is the uh, first Darbar, I think, sir. No. Second, second. It is the third, third Darbar. Third Darbar. First Darbar was Lord Lytton, Lytton in 1877, where he, on the background, is the 1876 Great Famine and the, uh, what you call, Plague. the peasant. Plague and famine together. In this, lakhs and lakhs people died in the central India in Maharashtra region. And on this background only, Ramos is forced by Basudev Balwan Padike. And the actions of Lord Lytton rise, led to the rise of Indian national movement. And Lord Lytton bestowed the what Queen Empress title on Kaiser E. Hind on, on Queen Victoria. Okay, background was this. And in 1903, Lord Curzon he uh, at the Delhi Darbar. What was that? 
in 1898-99, the great plague at bluebonic plague, Spanish flu, lakhs and lakhs people died in the famine in the Bombay, Marathwada region in Karnataka and it affected South India and other places. So the third Darbar is Lord Harding and the background is that communal politics was there, divide and rule was there and now Harding does. And among all the three Darbars, this Darbar is very important. Why? Third Darbar is important for two reasons. Why? Because you can see the British, the importance of 1911 Darbar is that earlier Calcutta was the capital of India. Now they bring this Delhi Darbar. In that Delhi Darbar, they ship the capital of India from Calcutta to Delhi. So this was on the religious grounds. They partitioned it. So now can you see the how naive they are? Now you can see the Bengali Muslims are understanding how British are naive. When they shifted the capital, they also played this communal politics. By the time also they brought what? 1906, they brought Indian Union Muslim League. Yes or no? Yes, sir. <clears throat> they divided. They not only divided. Now they are bringing 1909 constitutional reform and they are playing. Now, 1911, further issue. They are they are now bringing capital from Calcutta to uh, what? Where, which place? Which took Delhi. Other thing they did, what they did, they divided further the Bengal province. What? They broke the, the East Bengal, Bengali region, West Bengal, Bengali region. They made one, only Bengali region, and they said Bengali. And they made one, uh, uh, what we call, separate state called Assam province. It became chief commissioner province. And they also made one area, which is there, which is the the Bihar, Jharkhand, and Orissa, where you have the Bhojpuri, Hindi, and Odia languages. They made separate province. Can you see one entire entity? They broke into what? Not only on religious line, they also broke on what? In in linguistic lines. Yes or no? So now. You can see the reorganization when it started. They are pitting what? They are pitting Odia with Hindi and Bhojpuri. Now can you see that Bengal was the cradle of Indian nationalism. Yesterday we talked about uh, in national anthem. Rahul, if you go and see the national anthem, still 98% of the anthem which we are sung, sung today is in Bengali. Why? Because Rabindranath Tagore, when he wrote the, the, this song in the Tattva Bodhini Patrika, this national anthem, we have taken the first stanza, he wrote in a, in a format called Tatsama. It is, it is similar, this is in the Sanskrit. So that is why the words are similar to Hindi. Okay. It is 99% Hindi, in this particular in this one, national anthem, is still in Bengali. If you, if you go and recite in Bengali, 99% is the same words. Okay. So, uh, so it is it is using Tatsoma. Tatsoma is similar uh, in words which is repeated, uh, what you called again and again, Jaya Jaya. Like that, Tatsoma. But it is in Sanskrit. That is why it is... Uh, Similar because the mother language of most North Indian languages is Sanskrit. Okay, so you can see Bengali region. They are they are separating into what linguistic lines and religious lines. Now reorganization took place. Now people understood what is the agenda. What is the agenda? You can see in this Assam, Bihar, uh, the Bengali region. You have this Anushilan Samiti. This Anushilan Samiti is the mother of all revolutionary organizations. All revolutionary organizations, it is the mother. So, Sachindranath Sanyal and Resh Bihari Bose, who in 1907 became what? 
Indian National Congress is from which faction earlier? Resh Bihari Bose. Moderate faction. He was a moderate faction leader. He was a moderate faction leader turned um, uh, what you called revolutionary terrorist. The Anushilan Samiti members plot this Harding bomb place to kill the Governor General Viceroy Harding. So he was attacked, but he escaped unhurt. So you can see that the revolutionary attack was not successful. So in background, uh, we will see the revolutionary terrorists separately uh, now. So we will finish just what are the important events and separately we'll do revolutionary terrorism. So first world war started. World war started, first world war. And in when? From 1914 to 1918. Yes or no? World War I? Yes, sir. Is it so? Yes, sir. Okay. So you can see that on August 4th, 1914, World War started. So you can see the ego of British versus Germany. So Britain went and attacked whom? Britain went and attacked Germany. So automatically India was made part, what you call part of this war. And actually it was India who fought the war in literal sense. India's money, India's resources, India's men, and finally India's economy, which got badly damaged. Yes or no? Because war will war will enhance our economy or it will destroy our economy. Is war good for a country, for an economy? No, sir. No, sir. So they destroyed our economy. And British, they made India automatically power. So you can see British exposed this to the Indians that without the consent of the Indians, without the permission, without its due, this one, exploitation of India, because India was giving the money, India was giving the resources, India was giving the manpower, everything, and who's fighting? British never used Britain money. But did British use Britain money? Did they no, use sir. Britain money? No, did sir. Did they use Britain resources? No, sir. Did they use British, uh, British manpower? No, sir. <clears throat> and then when for what reason India was made? Can you see how systematically the British made India bleed white? Yes or no? Where what is the issue between India and Germany? Are India and Germany any any issues there? No, if sir. The egoistic issue of Britain and German, Britain went and attacked, they made India to pay for it. Sir. For, for all the losses and for the for every action what the British takes. Indian money was paid. Sir. So, yes, yes. Uh, was Britain, one? Uh, did Britain wanted to actually have control over Germany trying to annex or just it was? No, British, no. They have, Once they got this empire, they became more, more and more egoistic. How China is behaving so they, now. Like they wanted element. to. Yeah. They wanted, they wanted to, to control, control all this cat and mouse game because Today, you see what happened in the coronation of King Charles III. What all elements did you observe? Did you see that coronation, first of all? Yes, sir. What, what all elements of tradition was there, you see? What did they do? They went to the ancient tradition of how Holy Roman Empire, Emperor. Holy Roman Emperor will be anointed the same ceremony was done. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And the same procedure was followed. Second, they brought in the Byzantine, uh, uh, what you call the chant and the hymn. Byzantine chant and the hymn is very ancient Catholic. Yes or no? Byzantine is the Eastern Catholic. They brought that Byzantine hymn. Okay. Their consecration. This holy oil, what they used. Holy oil, what they used? They used what? They consecrated who? 
it is called in in syriac in the syriac language it is called holy muron it's called holy muron in greek it is called chrisma or chrism in english okay this sacred oil is a combination of many herbs and oils and it is used in the anointing of the in the bishops as well as on the emperors it is used so many symbolism they have used okay they used the ancient rite for what purpose what purpose so you ask no they are claiming what they are claiming the roman heritage yes or no yes sir yes sir indirectly indirectly but it was not right sir no, like uh, britain no, this is all hidden the only people who knows deep history the procedures of both the uh, english and they wanted to control they why they went and attacked turkey also turkey is the seat of what byzantium okay byzantine seat do you, are you understanding yes sir not, I, I see in what you called uh, superficially you will not understand the politics but deeply this is what is there because england wanted that crown to be their holy roman empire you can see which all kings came to attend his uh, coronation ceremony it was not it is a precedent now created you can see king frederick came spanish king came what they are all blood related most of the monarchy in europe is related to king charles family you go and see yes sir ah that means what then why did they go bring the ancient eastern catholic custom of uh, consecrating in jerusalem so everything in undercurrent it is there so that is why they wanted that what you call the inter rivalry who wanted to be the holy roman empire german wanted to be holy roman empire france wanted to be holy roman empire hungary wanted to be holy roman empire even austria wanted to be holy roman empire are you understanding english yes, wanted to be holy roman, holy roman empire okay denmark wanted to be holy roman empire these are what all european union are you getting so yes, yes, undercurrent is what they wanted one kingdom over other kingdom of ancient roman empire so it is that what you call the issue undercurrent is that only okay so that is why british attacked germany and they wanted to form what greater land and this greater land will become what great erstwhile roman empire of the west and they attacked turkey if turkey also was defeated and everything they wanted they wanted to be what the eastern roman empire are you getting me yes sir <clears throat> so this is the underlining cause if you look superficially you might see some politics but under if you go and dig this is the main thing that is why they they usurped no even after that see do you think that uh, british wanted to go only in 1946 when royal indian mutiny took place that time only they decided to leave india otherwise there was no question of leaving india this rin royal indian navy's outburst was the biggest uh, what you call setback for the british empire that is why they left that was the, one among the starting point of the reason when they decided to leave india otherwise they they were giving all concessions everything they wanted to anyhow save the empire and that is why all this administrative innovations they brought so you can see lord harding in his biography he wrote that india had been bled white during the world war 1 so he wrote the truth it was for the ego of the britain indian money indian resources indian men everything was settled <coughs> so what was the stance of moderate they are very loyal to british and what was the hope we will support them and they will concede to our demands why why because even <coughs> extremist also was in the favor that we will support them 
so that we will also get what swaraj so who supported world war both extremist faction as well as moderate faction supported why they wanted autonomy then who did not support there was one more new faction we rose they are called revolutionaries revolutionary terrorists these people who from the extremist faction these are the ones who never supported this war they said let us attack britain are you getting me yes now now yes sir so during this time you can see that a new group came who revolutionary terrorists extremely violent mean they want their strategy is that british are involved in world war attack them because they are now in weak position now once we attack them when they weaken in india they will give us what you call freedom they don't wanted dominion they wanted freedom independence they wanted so extremists and moderates wanted what they wanted to be in the empire and the Uh, the extremists wanted autonomy revolutionary terrorists wanted independence so lucknow pact of 1916 is very important because all the factions of congress comes together during that time ac majumdar ambika charan majumdar was elected the president but he was not there he was arrested and he was in jail so this was a joint session where all the stakeholders you can find the congress factions moderate faction uh, revolutionary faction extremist faction muslim league everybody comes together and muslim league faction of congress was headed by muhammad ali jinnah and indian national congress uh, elected ac ambika charan majumdar as the president importance of lucknow session what was important two things you can see that indian national congress and all india muslim league came together in the joint session of congress all factions of congress moderates came extremists came so lucknow session 1916 is important because all the factions of congress came together so what was decided in the session now congress also understood that we have to put a united front and we have to organize ourselves and put a united front congress now till now they oppose this separate electorate for muslims now congress changes his mind and they accept the demand and both all <clears throat> india muslim league also understood that how british have have destroyed the in the name of dividing the community they said we will give this and that they divided the muslims and now muslims are now betrayed by the by the by the british now they are saying that no we will cooperate with each other because british has played politics in between us so you can see there was a lot of bone who me started to come so during this place in 1915 annie besant joins congress now slowly she asserts her uh, this one so she starts the home group movement so on the basis of the what you called the uh, irish um freedom struggle so now home rule movement is brought so there were two organizations started doing home rule movement one was home rule league hrl and this was headed by annie besant and this besant she said she will look into bombay and other metropolitan cities and pan india and i hr Indian Home Rule League was started by Bala Gangadhar Tilak. Bala Gangadhar Tilak said he will take into the Marathwada Central Provinces. So Annie Besant started two newspapers to propagate this idea: Commonwealth, New India, and Bala Gangadhar Tilak has already <laughs> had well-established papers. He brought Kesari and Maratha in this. They started this Indian Home Rule League. This Home Rule movement is the second mass movement, which is the first mass movement. Swadeshi movement. 
Swadeshi and Baikot are the first mass movement. Home rule movement started by Annie Besant and Bala Gangar Tilak is the second mass movement. So what were the objectives of second mass movement? The second mass movement objectives were that Swaraj, self-government, abolishing untouchability and national education. How did the nationalistic leaders reached out to the masses in the second national movement? They started to bring debates, meetings where people started to enjoy uh, where they'd come. They, they started to use what? Transport, communication, as well as pamphlets, everything, the newspapers, they started to print and they, uh, they started to organize meetings and that meetings uh, separately also they had debates on the pros and cons. In this way, slowly the idea of home rule started to propagate the Indian subcontinent. Bala Gangadha Tilak now, he is not very much enthusiastic. So he is losing the zeal that he had. What he had in 1990s, he is not having in 1916. Can you see more than 25 years he has struggled. Now he is losing what? His zeal. The fire what he had. So now means what? After 25 means what? He is growing older. Yes or no? Yes sir. So that means moderate methods had what? Deep impact on whom? Impact on, on Bala Gangadhar Tilak because he was dissatisfied by the methods. So now you can see there was a big issue that happened. Now, which which will after this home rule movement. So during this period in 1960, new type of leaders are coming into leadership. Youngsters are coming, particularly Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Motilal Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Chitaranjan Das, Lala Rajput Rai. All these are gaining prominence. So who are losing steam now? Dada <coughs> Bhanoji, Dada Bhanoji. Then you have Bala Gangadhar Tilak, Gopala Krishna Gokhale. Then you have Parosha Mehta. Then all those leaders which were their moderate faction, tallest leaders. Now you can see new leaders are who? Chitaranjan Das, Motilal Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, Lala Rajput Rai. Then you can find Rajendra Prasad coming in. Then you will find uh, um, Sardar Vallabhai Patel coming in. Then you will find... Uh, so all those old guard is slowly waning out, new guard is coming. So second mass movement failed to get good response and no objective was received. Who disapproved this second mass movement? Who disapproved? Who disapproved? Mahatma. Mahatma Gandhi. So Mahatma Gandhi vehemently criticized this home rule movement. It said this movement will fail, no objectives will achieve. So now is the arrival of Gandhian politics into the uh, what we call national movement. Mm. So Gandhian era part one. So Gandhi, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi comes. So prior to that, you can see little background history. 1915, Bombay session, SP Sinha. This SP Sinha becomes later executive council member and also he becomes the governor of United Provinces in British India. SP Sinha is a very important personality. So in 1915, Annie Besant, she joins Congress and she moves the resolution for, for starting home rule leagues. But Congress disapproves this home rule leagues. So what happened? Tilak and Annie Besant, they soon only take their own decision. They start two leagues away from Congress. Because Congress did not approve. They rejected this idea. But, uh, Annie Besant and Tilak were very firm. Both of the leaders, they took this movement. By April 16, it was focused on Maharashtra and central provinces. By and Annie Besant said she will take care of the movement where? Which all places? Which all places? 
they said we will take it in in bombay province in all the metropolitan uh, provinces as well as pan india so this movement was inspired by irish home rule movement so what were the objectives of the second national movement uh, mass movement first thing home rule league movement wanted to attain home rule for india within british empire that means what they are asking for autonomy yes or no yes, so similarly what kind of autonomy what australia new zealand canada and other uh, dominion of uk is uh, british is having same kind of autonomy they wanted why they wanted so this autonomy is for what to self rule so tilak said swaraj is my birth right i shall want it now same tilak also says that swaraj of today is within the empire not independent of it so even tilak even tilak was very much uh, what he called uh, uh, of the fact that he did not want independence yes sir no Yes, Danny and can you can you yes, mic on uh, this one uh, mute sir Danny and please move mute your mic yes sir yeah yeah mic is on suddenly please mute it sir i have one question sir yes yes sir so uh, he did not want uh, independence from the british empire that means that he had uh, more inclined towards the moderates no moderates and extremists have one thought they never wanted uh, what you call independence they wanted swaraj swaraj means what autonomy, autonomy. and who wanted independence revolutionary terrorists uh, yes yes okay they wanted independence but uh, the the moderate and extremist want autonomy like australia new zealand they wanted that is why tilak had two quotations swaraj is my birthright i shall want it swaraj of today is within the british empire not independent of british empire so it is dependent on british empire that means implies in logic swaraj is dependent autonomy is within british empire not independent of it okay so we can see now extremist and moderates when they came in the uh, in the lucknow merger lucknow pact slowly they come to understand what is the issue that moderates also realize the value of extremist the extremists also understood the value of moderates how moderates they realize that for any struggle you require masses we don't have masses the extremists have that they are the connect so we require extremist moderates also re realized that extremists are asset to our congress they are not danger they are our then only will be able to take congress and tilak was already into home rule movement ani besan was already into home rule movement now so moderates understood that no we need to reach out otherwise we cannot make any change extremists also were very much uh, what you called realized that we require moderates why because we need to shield our margadakshak and they they with, without them it is difficult because they are the ones who built this organization called congress as a pan indian organization as a political party now we can't go and build new network with the network which congress has formed in 1885 in 30 years you can see the work done by them we cannot go and do 30 years is not a small job we cannot go and have an organization political network for any success of this movement we require the vast political network people resources and also we need to have a organization that is not possible without the congress so both the faction of congress realized now the other two factions of congress muslim league and international congress also realized that no we need to have a united congress and we require muslim league also because we need to put a united front against the british to counter the politics now muslim league also realized that british are playing politics welfare of more of muslims is not 
possible under imperial regime. Why? Because global events shifted allegiance of Muslims away from British. What was the global event? What was the global event which shifted the allegiance of Muslims away from the British? What was Caliphate. it? Huh? Caliphate. Khilafat. 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 That means what? Turkey. Turkey old name is what? Novo Roma. That is called Constantinople. So also Anatolia, right? Anatolia is uh, different. Baba. See, the yeah. Turkey region has uh, many names, but I am talking about the capital. Capital, yeah. Nova Roma. So what happened? They British tried to abolish. Why? Because in 1453, Turks had captured and they destroyed the Christian empire called Byzantine Roman Empire. Yes, I know. Byzantine yeah. Roman Empire. So Roman Empire lost in that way. The, the Europeans lost their big empire. So they wanted to take so revenge. So after 450, uh, 470 years, nearly 470 years, they take on their revenge. So now they abolished and there was the Kemalist revolution. Kemalist revolution. Mustafa Kemal Pasha. Mustafa Kemal Pasha was encouraged by the Britishers against the, the Turkish regime of Khilafat. So British wanted to abolish this Khilafat vehemently. So that is why Muslims shifted away their allegiance from the British and now they are not ready to believe what they are doing. They understood that they are playing one kind of politics in India, other kind of politics in global and only one thing it is, it is detrimental to the Islamic community. That is what they realized. So you can see in December 1916, Lucknow session of Congress, Ambika Charan Majumdar was the president. Now Lucknow merger comes where moderates and extremists were back together, bone home he starts. And Lucknow pact also was there with other factions of Congress and Muslim League all joined. And they said, we will resolve our differences. We'll put our common de um, demands for autonomy, self jurisdiction for, for Swaraj, and Congress now accepted the political demands of Muslim League, including separate electorates. So now Jinnah and Naidu, Sarojini Naidu, becomes the ambassadors of Hindu Muslim unity. In 1925, uh, Sarojini Naidu becomes the first woman uh, Indian origin president and second president of women president of Congress. In 1947, she becomes the first governor of the independent India of United Provinces in 1947. So Sarojini Naidu and Muhammad Ali Jinnah becomes the ambassador of the unity. So after the Lucknow session, it became joint efforts of Congress and Muslim League and two home rule leagues tried to develop the public opinion through what? Discussions, reading, pamphlets, lectures on a mass scale and with high intensity Fresh groups of people joined the national movement, like urban professionals came, everybody came, um, Sardar Vallabhai Patel came, uh, uh, Motilal Nehru, Jenna, and Jawlal Nehru, uh, Madan, uh, and other leaders came. So this new generation of Nehrus, when they joined, it gave a new energy, new blood, new lease of life for Congress. So what was the government reaction? Whenever there is a regrouping, how government will come? Government came heavily on the Congress and its new movement called Home Rule Movement. And even students were not spared. They were hit badly. They were thrown out of colleges. So they started to harass the Indian people, use the government missionary. Tilak was barred from entering Delhi. They put ultimatum on Tilak not to enter Delhi and Punjab area. Annie Besant was arrested in June 1917. When all leaders were arrested, and now Congress is leadership. Who arises to the occasion? You can see that Calcutta session, Annie Besant was arrested in jail. And in that jail, she was elected as the first woman president of say, Indian origin. I know she's the first woman president of Congress. 
she became so did balagangadhar tilak become the the president of congress bg tilak no sir no did gokhale become the congress president yes sir yes sir. so decline of movement started home rule movement why any besen alluded with montego's promise of reforms you can see that any besen was a was a british woman from the ireland she is irish so as a british woman she was uh, promised by montego who is this montego montego was the secretary of state and this secretary of state was also member of parliament of england and not only that he is a cabinet minister so he said that please don't bring any bad name to the british government we will not uh, tolerate we will give you concession what you want constitutional reforms i promise you we will give you so what they did any besen believed those words and they said now we are in the what they we are in the uh, movement what world war movement 1914 to 18 is world war so you don't interfere we will give you because already she was arrested and now they are giving this so she became what quiet so she uh, she was compromised later tilak had to leave for england to fight a case of valentine chirol in september 1918 who is this valentine chirol valentine chirol is a british writer and investigator and he was also into the investigating and writing his book so this valentine chirol he wrote what the the he about the revolutionary terrorism and he called uh, uh, tilak as the father of revolutionary uh, movement in the british india and this had a big effect on tilak so tilak was uh, uh, what he called uh, uh, was very much uh, Uh, what he called uh, uh, implicated and government of england used this uh, evidences which is written in the valentine chirol's book as an evidence so they took and now the case was filed in the court in london and the london court and uh, they took as a defamation case was put by by uh, tilak on valentine chirol but unfortunately the case got stronger with the evidence which is provided by valentine chirol and balagangadha tilak had to be defeated in this case and he had to pay a huge money as what a compensation so when he lost this case people he had to sell his press so what happened his associate said that if the press is the only thing asset he has if he sells press we cannot establish one so they Uh, bring tilak fund to fight uh, to pay for the compensation for this so by september 18 he left to england so when anibesen compromised tilak who left and all leaders were were uh, what he called they were caught and tortured and everything so there is no congress is leadership miraculously gandhi ji rises to the occasion so arrival of gandhi ji in the national scene what happens changes prior to the arrival of gandhi ji you can see that montagu the secretary of state he gives declaration on 20th august 1917 in the parliament of england he makes one state the secretary of state who is also the member of parliament as well as cabinet minister of london he gives the proclamation in the house of commons in the london parliament and he said india's future political reforms now we will be very much concerned and we will give them so what they said we want to increase the association of indians in the administration and also develop self governing institution this was the uh, what you call message was given by montagu the secretary of state member of parliament cabinet minister of the london government in the house of commons this was the thing he gave so this declaration was not very much believed by the indians and others so this led to the arrival of mahatma gandhi so the moderates era is from 1885 to 1905 the extremist era from 1905 to 1915 and gandhi ji arrives in 1915 
but you can see that effectively 1918 to 1947 is called Gandhi era, three decades. Gandhi era. So Gandhi ji used from 1915 to 1918 to understand the Indian psych and politics. In 1918, he rose miraculously to become the sole leader of the Indian National Congress. So shall we stop here? Tomorrow we will we will go. We will see moderate uh, the, the Gandhi ji's phase one, and later we will see phase two. Is that okay? We'll stop here. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. And also we'll see. We'll also discuss uh, after this. I'll finish the Gandhi era. The national movement will come completed. Then we will discuss the questions and we'll end the national movement modern history. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. See, you, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, sir, revolutionary terrorism. separate of park land solid. Mama, is that Pakaporo? Revolutionary terrorism in the Gandhi and Arrival than Adima Pud. Nam Park Life, Papo. In the Nali class, the revolutionary terrorism part of the Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Mm. So see you tomorrow, okay? okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. How is your health now, sir? Okay, okay, little better. Okay. Little better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. That's why I'm not able to take more, uh, what you call, I can take uh, classes uh, offline, six to seven hours, but online very difficult. Only two hours is very tiring. For you also You're taking treatment, no, sir, right now. I know I'll be going uh, next week. I'm going. Oh, where you try? Where you're planning to go, sir? Uh, I may go to Kerala or to Chennai for the trip. Is it a? a I would it see that, see that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, take care then. Yeah. Bye. Okay, See thank you, you sir. Welcome.